Hi everybody. Um, well, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and today's probably the best time I could do it. Um, I well, Kenny and I get tons of emails, but they're pretty much addressed to me on this subject. <coughs> Pardon me. Everyone asks um, me questions about American Indians or First Nations people, and I can only speak for myself. Um, but I'm going to answer three questions today. And I had them wrote down, but we left and went to the res and hung out with a group of friends because I hadn't seen them in a long time. And this time of year, because Indians do sell fireworks, they're always there and we knew they'd be there. So we hung out with them and then I saw some I hadn't seen in like 10 years. It was, it was really cool. Then when we left there, we had to go do a little grocery shopping and I ran into a Hispanic or Mexican, illegal Mexican. Um, this is one of those states where illegals can come and, and get their ID and stuff. And he hugged me and stuff and we started chatting because he's been here quite a while and he served in the military and all kind of stuff, but he's still an illegal. He didn't get a citizenship. And it was pretty cool talking to him. Um, he asked me what I was going to do tomorrow. He said, you don't celebrate the state this 4th of July. And I, I told him no. I mean, you know, it, it's somebody else's independence. We became the prisoner of war. And he agreed. He doesn't celebrate it either. <clears throat> so it was really good to see him. I hadn't seen him in a while. So, all right. But that's off the topic. And so now you know where I stand on some issues because it was human to human contact. And there he was a human being. Like I said, he served in the armed forces and uh, he still not got hit. I think he served in Vietnam. He's still not a United States citizen. He came here because they were promised if, you know, when the draft wasn't doing so well here, or people were fleeing, if people came over the border and served and made it home on a tour of duty, um, that they'd get their citizenship. And, and I've also known, I had a, another illegal Mexican friend who did that, and he, he died about three years ago, and uh, he had been sprayed with Agent Orange and stuff. He was illegal, too. Um, I mean, nobody messed with him. He actually worked at the courthouse as a translator in Grace Harbor County, I think, at one time in his life. Hmm. So um, <clears throat> they were both, they're both honorable people. One went to the spirit world or wherever, and the other one is um, was walking down the street today, and I was lucky enough to see him because he's a good guy. All right, <clears throat> enough of what I did today. I want to answer three questions so I don't get these emails all the time. First, uh, seems to be a big topic about saving my soul lately. <laughs> oh, um, so you really don't need to worry about me. Um, I've walked a, a different path than most people my whole life. It doesn't mean that I'm against, you know, what you believe in. Please don't be against what I believe. Um, let's face it. Not every, not even my people are perfect, just like the Christians, the Muslims, the Hindus, the <coughs> Krishnas, the Buddhas, the, you name it. Not, nothing's perfect. Nothing. But, um, but the question was, what do I believe in? Why am I not a Christian? I'm not a Christian because of the key words you asked me, and, and this is directed to someone who subs to me? Um, if I only put my faith in Jesus Christ, I would be saved. And, and you actually implied I was a heathen, which, uh, well, I'm not putting no names out there either. Well, whatever. Um, your key word was faith. Faith's an inaction word. That's a real big psyop word, so sometimes you have to watch what words you use. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I've always been raised in a different way. I believe that the earth is alive and is creation. I believe it was created by someone uh, or something, but it's completely alive and everything on it's alive. And human beings are supposed to be the ones who have the most intelligent and we're supposed to be stewards of this live earth we live on. We're supposed to take care of it. We don't even need that book of rules, any book of rules, to know that. It's in our heart. If you see an injured animal and you walk past it and you know you can help, then you're just a psychopath. 
If you see a hurt human and you walk past a human being and there's something you know you could have done, you're a psychopath. If you hurt people because someone tells you to go do that, you're a psychopath. Think about it. We were not put here to be killers and this and that, although it isn't a, I believe we have to evolve also and people are keeping us from evolving and I'm not new agey by any means. So first I'm going <clears> to <throat> clarify something. I said faith is an inaction word. Faith means that I just took all the responsibility for the next seven generations and said I'm going to leave it in somebody else's hands so I don't have to do one damn thing around here because I am saved. Well, I really can't do that because I am responsible for what happens. I'm living here. And I live for my children, my grandchildren. I need to make this place a better place for my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And, and I'll get to that in a minute. It's just seven generations. Um, and that is the road I walk. And I'm not offended by anybody else's religion. Um, I just hope that your religion... First off, the very first key thing is based on peace and love. If it isn't, I'd be scratching my head on it. Now, in before the eleven the eleven hundreds A.D. I'm gonna give you a little history lesson. That would be before the twelfth century. Um, here in this continent, North America, it was pretty much a a battlefield. Um, natives were killing natives. It was a bloody, it was just nothing but carnage. You could say it was savage. I mean, it was. I actually even believe I've heard stories of them being cannibals at some point. I don't know if that was true, but I do know how, that they were pretty barbaric <clears throat> to one another. And they actually got sick of warfare. And um, I'm not going to tell you all these stories that how things came to be, but um, around 1100 A.D., um, people got tired of it. I mean, it was just senseless killing. They realized, wow, this is kind of messed up. And that's our brother and sister that lives 20 miles away or 40 miles away, and we're just killing them. And look at this land we got. We don't need to do it. And, and they came up with something, and it was called the Great Law of Peace. And it is said that it... It is said by scholars, historians, archaeologists, um, did I say historians, that now they're finding out that the great law of peace is the one and only, because everybody likes to call us a republic, the one and only republic that represented every single person. Okay, the great law of peace came from the Iroquois Confederacy. <clears throat> Pardon me. Number two, I'm going to get to that great law of peace in a minute. But number two, the second, so I hope I answered your first question there about religion and stuff. I just follow a different road. Uh, yeah, we were savage and barbaric at one time, and we stopped. And, and we got a clue, and we discovered that the creation was all around us, and we were not supposed to behave that way. Okay, so number two, <clears throat> someone said, Native Americans were killed because they were savages, and they started it. Really? I got someone that just recently wrote that to me in an email. They've asked me a million questions, and they told me that it was all our fault. you got to be kidding me. First of all, the first settlers that came over here were starved to death if these savages wouldn't have fed them. Number two, the genocide was pretty much 95% of the North American continent of Native Americans through biological and just barbaric warfare, um, beheadings, uh, quartering Native Americans, killing the women and children, wearing the trophies of the women and children and the men, uh, fingers of children around your neck, the penises of men, um, they would cut off the women's breast and their uteruses out, cut the babies out. These things would be used as the Christians' trophies because we were so savage. We and everybody thinks we lived in teepees. We actually had houses. They were called long houses. We had communities. I mean, some were cities. You would call them cities. I mean, this was a working government. So I need to just dispel whatever you learn in high school or elementary school. That, you know, Indians were stupid and, and had no 
you know, they just went around and killed and stuff. So, in the 12th century, the Great Law, now I hope I dismissed the genocide thing, because we didn't kill, 95% of my ancestors were killed. And I'm not being angry, I don't, I'm not hating on anybody I'm talking to. I mean, they, you know, I'm just not, I'm just explaining what happened here in North America. Now, and my, my beliefs are personal, I should have said that at the beginning. I have personal beliefs, they should remain personal. It's a spiritual thing between me and the Creator. Um, I don't think it should be a, a written in a book thing of how you should act and think and stuff. I think it, to hold personal responsibility, it has to be a personal thing. Okay, last thing, and I'm probably jumping all over the place, is the Great Law Peace, and I get this question more and more and more. What is the Great Law of Peace? And it's, I can't really <clears throat> go through the whole Great Law of Peace. And I tried to break it down yesterday on Google Plus because I get this question so much. And did it really influence the Constitution? Well, you can go look that one up, buddy, let me tell you. So here, I'm going to read what I wrote yesterday on Google Plus, and then you can go and Google or whatever search engine you use and find out if I'm telling the truth or not. Now I'm sure I'm going to get comments down here that say the, and I, yeah, I, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, the Altrurians or somebody were here before you. Well, you know, I don't know what year you're talking about, but we have an oral tradition in our history and finally the arch archaeological peoples and the historians have finally looked at our oral history and found out we're telling the damn truth. Everything dates back to damn near the date. I mean, we have put in our oral history, and they might have put it on a rock, drew it on a rock, and it'll tell you every, every um, eclipse and everything else, and the historians are baffled. I don't know why they're baffled. We're human beings. We can think. Okay, so this is what I'm writing, and if I sound mean or anything, I'm not trying to be mean, but sometimes I get these repeat questions, and my whole inbox will be just filled up with everything about American Indians, and, and a lot of it's bad, like, um, get over it, get over it, get over what? I still my ancestors' land, and I'm still here, and, and, and it's almost like people want me to go hang myself or something because the corporations could just move on and be happy. Um, so here, I'm going to read what I wrote, and this is the best way I can describe the great law of peace. And after I read this, I want you to tell me if the founding fathers did the right thing or not. Because in my view, those founding fathers, since they sat down with the women of the Iroquois Confederacy, the women, um, they should have used the whole thing. And I broke it down as simple as possible in English because it's very hard for me to explain the whole great law of peace. So, I wrote, I'm passing the peace pipe and speaking truth. Peace pipe means when you pass the pipe around, it means that if you can't lie. It's just an honorable thing. You don't lie. So, by saying that, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. Um, Adams, Franklin, and Jefferson were so impressed by the great law of peace, they decided it would be the foundation of this new land's constitutional republic. The Iroquois Confederacy had been around since the 12th century, the only true republic that had represented every single person. This was called the great law of peace. The United States Senate has acknowledged that our law, the Iroquois, served as the model for the Constitution of the United States. And I leave the code where you can find it and go look it up. I'll, I, you know, I'll just post this underneath the video. The U.S. Constitution was in turn a model for the Charter of the Uni United Nations. Our laws is the basis of modern international law. <clears throat> the Americans copied our laws and customs, but they did not understand them. Um, so I'm going to explain them to you. Our, our ancestors recognized the sovereignty of all men and women by solving community conflicts through discussion in a people's council. In our tradition, three criteria must be kept in mind through all deliberations. Peace, meaning peace must be kept at all costs. 
righteousness, meaning they, meaning decisions must be morally right, taking into consideration the needs of seven generations to come. That means you, you don't live for yourself, you live for your children, their children, and so on. And so you're not being selfish. Um, power, meaning the power of the people must be maintained, including the equal sovereignty of all men and women. Conflicts between nations will also be resolved through diplomacy and consensus. War, or the use of violence, was only a last resort. Even then, the women and children of the opponents were spared. Throughout our, anse throughout, our ancestors always respected the other nations' different customs, laws, and ways of life whether they approved of them or not. They would work out agreements on how to live side by side. Not such a hard concept to grasp, and I asked this question on Google+, unless those founding fathers had some other motives. As an American Indian, I will tell you, this police state has been here since the arrival of DeSoto in Columbus. And it has. Even those founding fathers waged war on the people they learned this great, great law of peace from. I really want an honest opinion. If you really knew how and why this country got started, would you have changed anything? Would you celebrate freedom on the 4th of July? You're not free. You're now an Indian. The corporation has got what they wanted. They needed people to come and work this land for the corporation. You were sold out by your founding fathers. Read the um, is it Treaty of Paris. Um, after all this. You may disagree with what I'm saying, but actually what I'm saying about the Great Law of Peace and the Constitution is actually fact. As far as what I believe spiritually, it's personal. I don't hate anyone. Actually, I believe humanity should unite. I'd rather my money feed some people, refugees coming in from South America. They're indigenous. They're my brothers and sisters. I would rather since I have to participate in this illusionary system, and I do pay taxes, I want to let you know that, and I would rather my tax dollars go to feeding those people than being in any war on this earth. There is no reason for us to be in any war in anybody else's business. Our business is peace and humanity and to take care of the creation. Oh, we're doomed. You can leave your comments below. I just wanted to get this out there. And if you still think we're as savage as we've been made out to be, how could, in the 12th century, we made such a beautiful, beautiful constitution that even the Founding Fathers thought was so beautiful they didn't want to follow it? Because if they did, I mean, it's the basis for your constitution, but if they let everyone know how free we were, that's why they had to kill us then you would be free right now. Think about that. I love you all. I hope whatever you do tomorrow, you do it in a good consciousness, hoping all mankind will, because the 4th of July means absolutely nothing. It's another day. It's just another day. Remember that. It's another day. Another day where they took somebody else's idea, rearranged some words and put laws in them, and made people slaves, and then killed the originators of the law. I love you.